I don't know, I'm trying something a little different this time. I'm trying something a little new for this video. I got a wider angle. I wanna know what y'all feel about it. Do y'all prefer this or this? Which one? Let me know. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. If your day's not going good, I hope tomorrow is better. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button, that notification bell. Or to subscribe. Thank you for your loyalty. I got notes for this video. That means y'all know I'm locked in. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to take better football photos. You know, we done did the basketball videography, the football videography, but I have never touched on photography as most people are pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they think I'm mainly a photographer. When it comes to sports, I'm actually mainly a videographer. I don't know why. I honestly like taking photos a little bit more. It's just most people hire me for videos. I don't know, but when it comes to videos, I do it very well though compared to other people. I think that's what the case is. If you guys remember in the, vi in the football videography video, I said that you really did need great equipment. In this, case when you're doing photos you do not need the best equipment to take good photos dude. you don't um I, not, I never said to take photos like a pro or take photos like nfl photographers no just to take better photos you don't need way better equipment you don't need amazing five six thousand dollar equipment will it help of course obviously it will but you can take great photos with whatever you have now because it's not always about the camera you have with that being said you will need a telephone lens you don't gotta get an expensive one. Bro, I started off with a 75 to 300 telephoto lens and I took great photos. You could lock in. With that being said, that's all I had to say about equipment. That's it. Now we're gonna talk about the settings you need to have your camera in to take better photos. You wanna make sure that your shutter is in the highest FPS possible, meaning if your photo, if your camera, like for example, my A1 can take up to 30 photos per second. I never need to have it in that mode, but you wanna have it into whatever your camera's highest mode is. Do not have it on single, like don't have it on single shutter. You don't want to have it on the, like, I don't know, burst or something. Like no, just whatever the highest is on your camera. I'm not sure what the modes are, but you can check the camera that you have. And if your camera can shoot 10 photos per second, 15 photos per second, 20 photos per second, make sure it's at the highest. When you're shooting football, things are moving quick. Everything, it's it's action. Everything's moving really quickly. You wanna make sure it's at its highest. Next, you wanna talk about your focus. Make sure that if your camera has it, it should. Make sure that your camera is in continuous autofocus. You don't wanna make sure you're in the mode where it's like single uh, like single focus point or single autofocus where it locks onto something and if that something moves, that's it. No, you wanna put it in continuous autofocus so that when your subject is moving, it's holding focus with that subject. You're changing focus based off of if the subject is getting closer or further, whatever the case may be. In corresponds to that, I don't know if your camera will have it, but try to put on the eye tracking autofocus as well. You wouldn't really need it that much for football because your camera may not even be able to pick up on people's eyes, but just in case it can, just put it on, it'll help. Now, in terms of this, this is all personal preference, but I'm just gonna tell you guys what worked for me and help me make my photos better. Use spot autofocus and use the smallest one. When it comes to football, there's a lot going on in the game. There's a whole lot of players on the field. You would hate to lose focus on a player because someone else got in the way of your focus square. You know, I use the smallest one and I put it nice. You can move it, right? So when you're using spot focus, you can move it around. I just move it to the point of which I know my subject, well, I want it to be. So the center of my screen, and then I just move it up a little bit because since I'm taking low angles, I want my subject head for the most part to be at the top of my frame. Does that make sense? There you go. Once again, I'm not sure if all cameras can do this. I'm almost certain that they can. Your autofocus speed. You want to make sure that that's not too fast, but not too slow either. I would say a perfect median is okay. So whatever the middle is for your camera, put it there. For your picture profile, depending on your camera, you'll have to figure out what this one is for you, but you want to use a flat picture profile. So flat pretty much just means dull. You can utilize your presets to their full capability. So that way, I mean, you don't want to use a super vibrant picture profile and then all your presets are now going to come off a little extra vibrant than if you were to just use a dull flat picture profile. So there you go. In terms of settings, that's it. First off, this is a crazy freeze frame. One thing I did want to mention is your shutter speed. You definitely want to make sure your shutter speed at daytime is at no less than 1200. And at night, if you can push it to 500 with whatever camera you have, push it to at least 500. What we're gonna do now is a walkthrough of shooting a game. Starting off, we have pregame. It's up to you if you wanna be there for all of this, but I'm just gonna give the rundown of it just because this is a part of the game and not gonna lie, this is when you can get the best type of photos. In my opinion, personally, that's just me though. Now, if you wanna capture the pregame photos and I mean the entirety of the pregame photos, I would definitely say get there an hour, an hour and a half. Hour and a half stretching it, it's your time though. Get there an hour, hour and a half. So pretty much you're just arriving when the team arrives. 
that way you have them walking through the field. You can go get some locker room uh, footage and you can go get some warm up footage and you can go get whatever pregame ritual footage that they have. When they go into their stretch lines, they all put their helmets to the side. You get to have actual shots of the players with their helmets off, getting into certain stretch formations and stuff like that. You know, some of them may have the face paints on. It really gives a dope look. They may have the ski mask on, whatever the case may be. Um, and you, you're able to get shots that you're not able to get during the game, right? So even when they're doing their warm-ups, there's certain angles that you can get from being on the field while these, you know, while they're throwing the ball, whatever the case may be, that you wouldn't be able to get from the game. That's the perfect time to get it is pregame. Okay, now we have during the game. We're gonna kind of start at the very beginning, which is uh, the coin toss. I don't know how I did that, but I meant coin toss. You could, that's the first time, that's the only time during the game you can really get a face-to-face -face with a lot of the players. You get some pictures during the coin toss, you get pictures during the national anthem, national anthem before the coin toss, but you get pictures during both of those. Now the game is about to start, so you have kickoff. When it comes to photos, it doesn't really, matter too much of where you are just follow the ball if the play is on the very opposite side of where your team's end zone is you need to go over there you don't need to go behind that end zone but i would just say as the play is moving as the chains are moving pretty much you need to be moving so that way you can get a bunch of different kind of angles you don't need to move too too much but the one thing about football photography especially if you're at a big game there's a lot of photographers you want to make sure that your shots stand out so you want to get a bunch of different shots you don't want to be in one spot the entire game and then all your shots look the same for everybody so it's about six different positions you can be at on the field that would give a really dope, unique look. You know how the players have to remain in a certain box on the field? A little bit in front of that. So you're able to go outside that box. So right there on both sides of the field and uh, you know, on both ends of the field as well. Another thing you could also shoot while you're in that same position, like you know, on the same on the sideline with your team or the team that you're shooting for, some pictures of the players on the sideline, the coaches on the sideline, I feel like that's a dope shot as well. You never know what you can get, keep your eyes peeled. And then last but not least is pretty much post game, depending on the game that you're at. If it's like a state game or anything like that, you would wanna get some pictures after the game. Um, rather that's with the trophies being announced or the players celebrating or the coach getting the, the Gatorade dumped on them or whatever the case may be. You wanna capture all that. Those are nice pictures to capture, but that all depends on the game that you're at. I'm gonna leave you, well, one key thing to remember, depending on the type of photographer you are, if you wanna better your photos and make it a little bit easier for you to shoot, shoot horizontally. Shoot horizontally and then crop and post. That's just a little tip. Little tip, little simple tip I learned from my boy Matt Kip. Shoot horizontally and then crop and post. All right, we, we're pretty much done with that. We're at the end of this video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick shot list, which is pretty much things to look for when you're at a football game. During the game, you wanna capture action and still shots. So firstly, a shot of the wide receiver lining up. So that's rather than giving the thumbs up to the ref check and make sure that they're good. That shot is always dope, no matter what angle you're at. Realistically, I feel like an angle directly from the sideline of the wide receiver doing that is a pretty dope shot. Depend you could be at the other side of the end zone that they're facing. That's also a dope shot of them doing that. It doesn't really matter where you are on the field, as long as you get the picture, it's a dope shot. And also that you're at a low angle, low, angle please um and then at the same time as you're getting that still you want to wait until the play starts and then you get them breaking off the line running their route it's always going to be a nice photo it always turns out to be something super dope uh, no matter what it is that they're doing no matter if they catch the ball or they don't them getting off the line and bursting off the line it always turns into a really nice shot a shot of the running back running the ball or even the wide receiver catching the ball running the ball either anything of anybody running the ball looks dope so at that point, follow the ball. If you see anybody running it, take pictures. Shots of the quarterback before the play starts. So you have the quarterback, rather they're directly under um, the snapper or you know it's gonna be a long snap, whatever the case may be. Take photos of the quarterback and then when they step back, you wanna go ahead and get some pictures. The best place to be to get those pictures of the quarterback when they're stepping back to throw the ball is gonna definitely 100% be from the sideline because if you're at the end zone, the linemen are probably gonna get in your way. So if you wanna get a full body shot of the QB when they're holding the ball, they're going back, let's say you wanna get their full throw, you're gonna be on the sideline. Either one of the sidelines is fine, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you can see the QB. These are pretty easy shots to catch. Shots of the linemen blocking. Either, either side doesn't really matter, but those are pretty simple shots to get. If you see somebody about to be tackled, start taking photos. Don't, you have to predict these things to happen, mind you. A lot of these action shots you have to predict are gonna happen, you have to know the game. Because if you start taking photos after the tackle already starts, it, it's over. So you wanna start taking photos before it happens. Another thing you definitely want to make sure you're on the lookout for is celebration. So directly after, after a touchdown or even after a big run or a big catch, get the celebration. Take photos of the celebrations. Photos of celebrations are fire. Listen, 
to go back to the whole wide receiver thing this is gonna be the last uh thing on the shot list to go back to the wide receiver thing if you see the ball thrown to a wide receiver you know where the ball is going you need that it's all quick you got it you got it you got to be on point you got to be able to know okay you see the ball is going up in the air far you got to be able to find where that ball is going you got to predict these things you'll get better at them over time figure out where that ball is going start taking pictures of the wide receiver about to catch it before the ball is to them that's why I said you got to predict who it's going to. In most cases, it's pretty simple to figure out who it's going to, but you want to take pictures before the ball is even getting to them because you're able to get shots like this for the most part, right? So shots before the ball is really even in their hands because it may be even a head tap or something like that or just a, like an Odell type catch. You don't want to capture that late. You want to get the before the, the before the catch, during the catch, and after the catch. You want to get the whole sequence. So you got to make that prediction. You got to make it you know confident other than that i think that is pretty much all for this video um i was gonna do this video similarly to how the, the football one out on the field but i had all the information and footage of pov footage of me doing this as i needed so i'm just like we'll rock out here i hope you guys did enjoy this video once again thank you for all the support in the most recent video i don't know what time this is coming out but i'm pretty sure by the time this goes out i might be at 2,000 subs so i appreciate y'all so much thank y'all thank y'all thank y'all thank y'all other than that that's all check out the merch link in the description down below check out the preset link in the description down below <sighs> Man. Mm. Thank y'all so much for everything, bro. I appreciate y'all. Don't forget to stay creative. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>